Hey MGTOWs, this is Vention. <laughs> Oops, pardon this thing. <laughs> um, even in Guadalajara, you know, sometimes if you're walking around town, people will scowl at you if you're not wearing the, the sheeple pass. <laughs> um, so, and then I was just in a business and uh, a couple of businesses and uh, so I'm just, uh, I just ended up forgetting I had it on. <laughs> um, I use a, a trick for mine. I basically I, I bend the wire over my nose, um, and then at the same time I turn the straps into a figure eight, right? And that way uh, it sort of bunches the mask up a little bit, and it gives me a more of a channel to breathe. So, so my breathing breathing. <laughs> isn't really impeding, <laughs> impeded. Speaking of breeding, man, I could, I could hit all, any number of uh, massage parlors around here and just for old time's sake, I could give it a try. But <laughs> with, the, um, with the surgery, you know, um, basically it looks like most of that functionality is, uh, is uh, now curtailed. But uh, so basically, I can do that, but, um, and about once every 20 days, I really need to because I start getting that restricted blue ball feeling and the tenderness and the testes and whatnot. And um, then I can uh, dial up a certain website and get it over with. But um, I think my prostate has been disconnected somehow. Um, so it is not, so nothing comes out basically. But, uh, but I can, have something like an orgasm and uh, and then the blue ball feeling is gone right so so yeah um, man I am so free compared to the way I was in my like 20s because I would get that feeling like every three days <laughs> instead of every 20 days man I I love being 56 <laughs> um, went and got a haircut um, uh, Town Monger had some shit to do, so, uh, I, uh, you know, he, and he was really concerned for me, you know, he was, he was, uh, you know, reluctant to, uh, to leave my side, and I am very grateful for it, but, um, you know, my biggest worry on this little trip, I went and got a haircut and went and got a, a broom and some vitamin C, um, but his, my biggest worry was that my left knee is it really acting up, and uh, and I might have had to have been lowered to having to uh, <laughs> having to uh, take an Uber back five blocks. <laughs> but um, you know, as I as I worked the knee um, on my walk, uh, the inflammation and the swelling seems to have dropped down, and uh, so. Basically, I have a new thing on my uh, on my shopping list, and that's a knee pad, like I used as a mechanic. Uh, just some kind of thing made of foam rubber that's about maybe two feet by one foot, so that I can kneel on it without damaging my knees. And uh, the reason I have to kneel so much is because of my colostomy bag. Um, kneeling three times a day, maybe, uh, is really starting to put it put it. Put a load on my knees that I am not uh, that I knew better to do when I was a mechanic because when I would kneel and work and stuff uh, without a knee pad, uh, you know, pretty soon I was walking with a cane again and I would have to call in sick and man, that's uh, not a good place to be. So 
Next thing on my shopping list is a friggin' knee pad. They have an awesome hardware store about two miles away from here, and uh, I've been buying all kinds of shit because <laughs> it's like candy for me. And uh, bought a really nice Makita drill and a bunch of uh, attachments and wrenches and pliers and. Uh, and it's all for the excuse of fixing my shower. Uh, it was leaking, or it was like dripping really bad. But the problem is it's just not adjusted correctly. And, um, and basically I'm going to uh, use the uh, grindstone on the drill to just adjust the handles a little bit so that when you crank it all the way closed, it's off and it doesn't drip. Um, but before, um, I mean, if you, if you crank it too far with like the, the screw out, uh, then water starts coming out the front of the valve, right? But if you uh, screw it down to the exact right point, I'm gonna adjust the handle so that it stops at that point. So, good times. You know, give me something to fix and I'm always happy. <laughs> um, I hate those little brooms like that because eventually that friggin' thing will unscrew on you and then every time you hit it with your elbow or knee or something the thing spins off and then ends up on the floor and and you just have an overwhelming urge to just beat the brush with the uh, with the handle and it does no good at all so for 35 pesos I'm not sure how much that is in dollars uh, I got this drip this uh, broom and this thing will not unscrew <laughs> Uh, and I also got some of this awesome effervescent vitamin C. I mean, if you can't get uh, liposomal vitamin C, this two gram uh, effervescent C is really awesome. You can, uh, I can put it in fruit juice or lemon tea or something. It makes it even taste better. And uh, yeah, and uh, maybe one or a half a gram of that vitamin C will actually be absorbed. Whereas, because we, it's hard for us to absorb as much vitamin C as we need. And I need all I can get with this whole cancer thing. Um, speaking of cancer, uh, since I went to um, immunotherapy in Tijuana, and I, I went through that uh, hyperthermia treatment, I mean, I would have a problem with breathing in, you know, and I would feel a sharp pain right here, but uh, that's gone. So basically, for, as far as cancer goes, I have no pain anywhere. Um, now we're back to uh, the whole uh, disastrous uh, <laughs> one-party system that we, we're going to be having soon. And um, people are going to be, uh, they're gonna, just going to double down on what they're doing already. People are going to get canceled. People are going to uh, have services denied to them. <laughs> And even though uh, Twitter and whatnot is taking advantage of a lot of taxpayer-funded infrastructure, um, they feel free to like cancel anybody they want. So I don't even use Twitter. I use it as a sign-in so that I can use my Tip and Me website account so I can sign in because that's the only way you can do it. And then I can get uh, lightning donations uh, from my subscribers and. Sure, I don't need the money, but uh, a 50 cent tip is like a high five from other people who are able to use lightning. So, uh, what we're gonna be seeing going forward, pardon me while I limp over here and then have a seat. <laughs> oh, that chair looks comfortable. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be uh, seeing more services denied to us, uh, such as, you know, Facebook and uh, YouTube, and but but it, it's going to get worse, or the trends seem to show that it's going to get worse, and how it's going to be get worse is was we got a little preview of that back in the Obama administration. Uh, he had uh, he had an office in his you know in his infrastructure part of his. Uh, part of his, well, I don't know what you would call it, but it was a, it was an office, and they called, they ran a program out of it called Operation Choke Point, and what that was was um, if 
if the people in the office didn't like what you were doing, you know, something, if you were running a business they didn't like, uh, or uh, they just didn't like you, period, they would uh, call the banks or notify the banks that you are persona non grata, and then the bank, the banks would, uh, would basically cancel you. They would cancel your checking accounts and credit card accounts and whatnot, and then you would, um, then they would like be struggling to try to find another bank and most of them never could. Gun shop owners had a problem with that, big problem, and some of them had to close their doors because they couldn't take Visa card payments they, and cash is pointless, you know. Uh, you can't pay your suppliers with cash when they're 1,500 miles away. I mean, you can take cash to the bank and then, uh, and then attempt to uh, get a cashier's check and it's, it's, and assuming the bank would even serve it, get, provide service for you, they, they uh, don't, they don't have to. So, and some of them were relying on things like these uh, payday loan places to get cashier's checks and, and it, um, and it was expensive and it was a tremendous time sink and some gun shop owners closed their doors and I, I seem to remember one lady who was a porn actress like uh, back in the 70s and they canceled her too for some reason um, so we I suspect are going to I see the trend you know just I was like the trend like the trends video I made a few months ago um, where I mean, I see things coming, and then I take action to try to prepare for it to uh, and avoid the problem. Uh, one thing I did was, of course, getting Bitcoins, and another thing I did was, um, you know, getting a passport, and I'm, I'm here in Mexico, and supposedly this city is locked down, but, man, I can go anywhere and uh, walk into any business. The only thing I need is that mask. So I just put the mask on and lock in. <laughs> Weird. So, um, so basically, if I if my checking account were can't were were like denied to me, and uh, and as I suspect, things like that are going to be happening. Uh, there are services where you can do online bill paying with uh, Bitcoin, and. They're like decentralized uh, exchanges where you can, where you can do some trading, you can do some, uh, some payments like that. I have, I'm not sure about, uh, um, I'm not sure exactly, but I know that in the website called Paxful, you can, uh, you can basically have somebody pay your electric bill, and then you pay them with Bitcoin, and then if they have a good rep reputation, you know, you don't want to trust anybody with this or or they might be attempted to reverse the payment once they got your bitcoins because bitcoins are irreversible. So what you would, what happens is you put it into escrow um, in on the website and then once your bill is paid, uh, you then release the escrow and then give the person a good review and he does the same for you and it's great. And then, so basically what I think I might do to prepare for getting depersoned or unpersoned by uh, the banking system and things like that is I think I'm going to um, see about making a Paxful account and then uh, see if I can uh, you know explore it and attempt to uh, attempt to uh, see what it has to offer because I've only heard of these services and I've been a little bit distracted by for obvious reasons so I haven't actually uh, uh, done much in that direction, but but I'll tell you, I've got uh, I've got bitcoins, and the time will come when I will be able to, um, for example, if I if I go to to do the permaculture mechanic thing, um, and I want to sort of settle in one place, I could hire all a lot of labor uh, using lightning enabled bitcoins. And then they could just flip it through the cash app to uh, drop it to their checking accounts. And that a lot of permaculture people are short on actual fiat cash. And, uh, but they're very wealthy in physical strength and knowledge of permaculture. 
uh, they dwarf me in permaculture knowledge. And I could, I could conceivably, if I decide to settle someplace, I could hire like 10 people <laughs> to work on my shelter while I'm limping around uh, attempting to help. <laughs> and then uh, they could build my rocket mass heater and everything. And then by the time the snow flies, I would have a comfortable place off grid and um, and you know depending on how bad things get in the main stream I could conceivably pretty much drop out of sight you know um, and hardly even be noticed you know I could I could uh, I could pay people when they're gonna go out do a grocery run give them uh, a grocery list and reimburse them with lightning you know I could I could practically drop out of except for like my driver's license and insurance and stuff like that I could practically drop off the grid and then uh, my expenses would be so low that it would be below 38,000 a year uh, so I wouldn't even be so the cat what I cash in for Bitcoin as long as it's below that unless they change the law um, my basic my income tax bill would be zero, uh, depending on what state I am. Some states have state income tax, but if I stay in uh, my current state, Washington, um, I have no state income tax. So, yeah, it may be a weird lefty state, but you know, there's some good things about it too, like um, like um, it, concealed pistol licenses are easy, licenses are easy to get, and uh, silver and gold are considered money and if you go to a coin shop you'll pay their markup or their markdown and um, but you don't have to pay st state sales tax on it so uh, so basically I can buy and sell silver um, for just the markup that the store charges and I have a excellent little coin shop that I like to go to uh, it's a bit of, of commute now but uh, uh, but I could go and um, and I still have most of my silver left over from, the, well, about half my silver left over from the 2008 era and the silver that I bought since then. Uh, so basically, it's a nice emergency fund if I ever need it. So basically, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm predicting coming forward is uh, we'll get more canceling. We'll, more people will be canceled from the social media. And in time, as the leftists get more, you know, well, not really the leftists, the corporate elite who have bamboozled the left into thinking that they are left, and now they are basically socking down control of the country, and, and a lot of leftists are now uh, realizing that they voted corporatists in, and another cor name for cor corporatist is fascist. So, uh, so basically, those are the people they voted for. And those people are colluding, you know, uh, the social media giants are colluding with the Democratic Party to just sh say that they can do no wrong and um, totally ignored Biden's son's laptop and all the scams and graft and whatnot. And um, now the true liberals who, who are well-meaning liberals and generally they're pretty good people, <laughs> And uh, uh, they're starting to realize that, oops, we might just have a problem. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so they're starting to complain about that. But, well, this is what we got. And uh, now we're going to have to adapt to it or get out of the country. And, uh, and I, I've been screaming about Bitcoins for, since 2015. And uh, a lot of people, uh, a lot of MGTOW have really benefited from that, and a lot of them have ignored it and are now uh, now in a, a lurch because they're not in a financial position to leave the country if, if that becomes necessary. So if you can't leave the country, what can you do? Um, I'm thinking personally, I would like to stay in the United States. Um, this language barrier here in Mexico is is quite a cross to bear um, 
but I'm not going to go home until either the spring rolls around or the lockdown is lifted, one or the other. And, uh, and then when that occurs, and if we're still locked down, I'm going to pack up the rental house and toss my old man in the back of the truck and uh, haul ass to a red state and uh, pick up a house there. And um, I'm not sure if I'll buy or if I will, uh, or if I will uh, rent. I might not be able to rent because I don't have a job, you know, and so um, so that could be a problem. Uh, so I might be forced to, you know, cash in some bitcoins and just buy the whole freaking thing outright. And if I do that, man, I would have one heck of a tax bill to pay at the end of the at the end of the year. But I would own it outright. So uh, that's another thing I'll have to really think about. Because I don't, I don't see us having a real serious um, crash in the real estate prices in red states and in rural zones where I want to live. Um, I think that houses and property in those areas are going to be very desirable for a lot of people who are fleeing the cities. So I don't expect there to be a great crash in those prices. Whereas I do expect a great in incredible great crash in the real estate prices in the cities and especially the blue cities. And the closer to downtown you get, the more of a crash there will be. So that's one other thing to plan for. And boy, guys, the whole society is being locked down into a, uh, into a, uh, like a, um, uh, a friend of mine from Eastern Europe, one of my fellow mechanics was, uh, saying that it was a lot like the Ceausescu regime, a regime in, uh, geez, what's that country called? Romania, yeah. Uh, and he's saying, man, it's, ju it's lo getting locked down just like Romania did a long time ago. So, um, and I was suggesting to him he should get, consider reestablishing his residency in Romania and possibly getting a second passport because if he if he needs to flee the country, having a Romanian passport could conceivably allow him to get out, whereas Americans could be locked in. So yeah, we're going to see a decrease in freedom, and what we need to do as MGTOWs is to work to try to increase our freedom, as we always do, and look at the limitations that the next Operation Choke Point and getting canceled from social media we're going to have to find ways around that. Like uh, for my Twitter needs, I am on, uh, I am on um, float now, now that they have banned uh, or canceled uh, uh, Parler. And I wasn't even terribly up on Parler, or, I, but I did have an account there and I did follow a bunch of people, but now that's canceled. But float seems is supposedly a blockchain operated thing, much like library. So, um, so basically it has a less, a lower chance of getting um, deleted. Well, it's kind of a nasty cold day for Guadalajara, all cloudy and shit. I couldn't get my sun. I like to, I like to get eight minutes on each side so I can get that vitamin D going. And uh, so I just took my vitamin D supplements after, during breakfast and uh, well, fingers crossed. Uh, uh, that's about all about it. I'm going to uh, probably research Paxful and fart around on the internet and just, man, I am so enjoying just having a, such a low stress life here. Um, the only, the biggest hurdle here is the, uh, is the uh, language barrier and my left knee now. Um, but uh, I'm working on it. Estoy aprendiendo, which means I am learning. Uh, so I, I spend like at least an hour a day studying Spanish and it's slow going at 56 years old but every day I add a little bit more like uh, like I had such a tr such trouble uh, um, remembering what the word for broom is and uh, and now I don't have it again. <laughs> so many words, just I can recognize them. It starts with a B, I think. Uh, 
no, that's basura is trash. Well, anyway, uh, it's you know kind of confusing, and the only thing that's going to help me is practice. So, MGTOWs, that's about all I got for you. All I can say is plan for what's coming. Plan for the lockdowns because the next Operation Choke Point is coming. What would you do? How would you react if you were denied banking access? And then conceivably, even worse, you could can possibly be denied, um, you know, access to things like utilities, like your, like your cable internet could get canceled. Um, it's conceivable your electric could get canceled. Um, what would you do in situations like that? Um, if you don't own the house and your electric is canceled uh, and then the whole pipe, the whole thing that freezes and your pipes freeze, well, you, you could warn the uh, landlord that somehow you've got to get electricity there or your or his pipes are going to burst. Um, and it's going to be a nasty business. Pete, you might have trouble renting a place, you know, you might have to rent for cash like rent a spare room uh, with cash or Lightning Network Bitcoins, perhaps, uh, in order to just keep a roof over your head. You might, you might end up living in a car, you know, or a truck, um, or an RV, you know. Um, no way of knowing how bad it's going to get, but it's important to consider the possibilities, project what could happen, and make some plans on how you're going to how you're going to react to it how you're going to adapt to it so we've got a lot of interesting shit coming down the line so yeah plan well really think because as i was saying before your future well-being really depends on the quality and the clarity of how well you can think right now so and don't think like really vaguely, don't, don't think with hope. Hope is not a strategy. Break it down, put it all out on the workbench and really think with just logic. What could happen, what's likely to happen, what's happened before like Operation Choke Point and how you will and what kind of plans you can make to compensate for it. And what kind of actions you can take to really, that could really smooth your way if shit like that occurs, um, the plans you make and the adjustments and the preparations you make for those events now could really smooth your life out and make it vastly easier and lower stress uh, when, when those really bad times start coming. And um, this leftist, a corporatist government will go as long as it can and it will go as long as it has other people's money to spend and when that money runs out um, the leftists will freak and they'll start saying you're selfish and you're hiding money and then we could have like something even as bad as gulags uh, supposedly PBS has a leftist uh, who's high up in the in their chain of command who is saying that children of Trump supporters need to be taken away from their parents and then put into re-education centers so that uh, the, the orange man, uh, 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 you know, <laughs> the orange man will not uh, be in their thoughts in the future. That is like serious, serious Ceausescu uh, Romania Nazi BS uh, total Stalin crazy insanity so yeah it's uh, it's important to really plan for these these things and if things get that bad man I don't know if I'll even be in the country and one thing's for sure as a MGTOW they don't have any hostages that they can really use against me like like stealing my children so um, so that's one thing I one vulnerability I don't have because I'm a MGTOW. Um, but man, think about things. Clarity of thought. Really project what's going to be happening. Really think about what's happening. And uh, don't get married.